He transferred chapter 6, lecture 2, Fundamentals of Convection. In this particular lecture, we're going to look at different, the different types of fluid flows that are, that are available by convection. So first of all, you can have what's known as viscous flows. These are flows in which the frictional effects are very significant. You can have inviscid flows, and, and these are regions that, uh, where the viscous forces are, are negligible. So uh, in a lot of uh, kind of flows, cl very close to the surface, you end up with these viscous flows, and as you move away from the surface, it becomes inviscid. Other kind of way to classify a flow is by either it's external or internal flow. External is the flow of, of an unbounded liquid over a, a plate or around a wire. Uh, internal flows, of course, would be flows inside of a pipe. You can also have what's known as incompressible flows or compressible flows. Uh, if it's incompressible, the density of the flowing fluid remains nearly constant throughout. This is for example, like liquid flows. If it's compressible, this is typically the case of like gases. Um, oftentimes what used for uh, gas flows is what's known as the Mach number uh, for rockets or spacecraft. This is simply the uh, speed of the flow divided by the speed of the sound. And so if the Mach, Mach 1 would be exactly, uh, the, the speed of the flow is exactly the speed of sound. And if you're less than one, it's subsonic. If you're greater than one, it's supersonic. And if you're much, much greater, it's hypersonic flows. Another way to classify fluids is by whether it's laminar or turbulent flows. Uh, so if you took uh, fluid mechanics, uh, hopefully you talked about the difference between laminar and turbulent flow and transitional flows and, and, and using what's known as the Reynolds number. Uh, laminar flow is highly ordered, turbulent flow is highly disordered, and transitional is the uh, boundary basically between these, uh, these two, uh, between laminar and turbulent. So what is the difference between laminar and turbulent flow? Well, from Reynolds' uh, experiments, he was able to classify the different flow regimes by using the following relationship that's now known as the Reynolds number. So the Reynolds number is a dimensionless quantity. It's calculated based on either uh, using this equation or, or this equation. Uh, rho is the density of the fluid. V is the velocity of fluid. D is the diameter of the pipe. Uh, mu is the dynamic viscosity of the fluid. Uh, nu is the kinetic viscosity uh, of the fluid. So generally, the flow, different flow regimes are classified as follows. Where Reynolds number is less than 2,000, that's referred to as laminar flow. For Reynolds number is between 2,000 and 4,000, that's transitional flow. And for Reynolds numbers greater than 4,000, it's turbulent flow. You can also have natural flow or force flow. Uh, if it's forced, it's, it's forced to flow uh, by using a pump or a fan. Natural flow is, is natural means uh, there's no fan or, or, or pump needed. You can also, also uh, classify flows whether it's steady or unsteady. If it's steady, it's no change at a, a given point with time. Uh, the opposite would be unsteady. You can have what's known as uniform flow, which means that there's no change with location. Uh, you can have periodic flows, which is kind of unsteady flow that oscillates about a steady mean. Uh, so many of the devices we, we deal with are steady state flow devices like turbines, compressors, boilers, condensers, heat exchangers. These are steady state flow devices, which uh, fortunately makes the calculations a little bit easier. You can also have what one dimensional, two dimensional, or three dimensional flows. Uh, these kind of flows are best characterized by a velocity distribution. Um, so here shows a, a, a flow in a pipe, and you can see the, the flow is different depending on, on where you're at inside the pipe. So section three deals with uh, velocity boundary layers. So if you have a flow near a surface, uh, like flow inside of a pipe where the water uh, comes in contact with the surface of the pipe, uh, you, you can develop what's known as a, a uh, wall shear stress. 
So the wall shear stress is just the friction force per unit area as the uh, water or fluid flows next to the, the, uh, the solid surface. Uh, this shear stress for most fluids is proportional to the velocity gradient. And the shear stress at the wall surface is expressed as the following equation. Here u, uh, mu is the dynamic viscosity. Uh, the fluids that obey this linear relationship are what's called Newtonian fluids. And most common fluids such as water, air, gas, and oils are Newtonian fluids. Um, blood and liquid plastics are examples of non-Newtonian fluids. In this uh, textbook, uh, he only considers the Newtonian fluids. In fluid flow and heat transfer studies, the ratio of dynamic viscosity to density appears frequently. For convenience, this ratio is given the name of the kin kinematic viscosity, and it's defined as follows. This is me usually measured in meters squared per second, or what's referred to as a stroke. The one stroke is one centimeter squared per second. The viscosity of a fluid is a measure of its resistance to flow, and it is a strong function of temperature. The viscosity of liquids decrease with temperature, whereas the viscosity of the gases usually increase with temperature. Some typical dynamic viscosities of fluids at one atmosphere and 20 degrees C are listed as follows. Um, some of these, of course, they're, they're not at minus 20 degrees C, but uh, those ones are, are shown in the, uh, in the highlight. For example, for glycerin at minus 20 degrees C, it, the dynamic viscosity is 134. Since we often do not know the flow velocity profile, a more practical approach in the external flow to calculate the wall shear stress is to relate the wall shear stress to the upstream velocity. This is done by the following equation. C sub S here is what's known as the friction coefficient or skin friction coefficient. And once we calculate the wall shear stress, if we know what the area is, we can multiply by this equation by the area to calculate the friction force over the entire surface. This friction force is an important parameter in heat transfer studies since it's directly related to the heat transfer coefficient and the power requirements of a pump or a fan. So let's take a look at the following uh, problem, problem 642. Let's consider fluid flow over a surface with a velocity profile given as follows. So here we can determine um, the shear stress at the wall surface if the fluid is a, air at one atmosphere, and B, liquid water, both at 20 degrees C. Also, we want to calculate the wall shear stress ratio for the two fluids and interpret the results. So we can calculate, we have the formula for the wall shear stress is equal to mu times the partial of U with respect to Y, evaluate the Y equals zero. So here we, we take the derivative of this equation with respect to Y, uh, which is shown here. We evaluated that Y equals zero, so this term goes away. I'll cross these off. Uh, this term goes away, this term goes away, and we're si simply left with 100 uh, times mu. So continuing our problem from the previous slide, we determined that the wall stress was equal to 100 times mu. So here we have to find what value of mu is. So for air, we can look in table table uh, A9, uh, I'm sorry, A A15, at 20 degrees C, we can come over and find what the, the mu value of air for the dynamic viscosity, 1.825 times 10 to the minus fifth. So we can calculate it as 1.825 times 10 to the minus third newtons per square meter. For water, we can determine at 20 degrees C from table A9 that the dynamic viscosity is uh, one, uh, basically 1 times 10 to the minus 3. Uh, so it turns out it's much higher, the wall stress for water, than it is for air, which you might expect. Uh, liquids are going to have a, a stronger friction force against the wall than, than air. Okay, that's the end of this particular lecture and the end of uh, this lecture series for, for this chapter.